Tiger Valley Habitat for Humanity's Big Enough project is our very first pilot project. One Garfield Avenue in Northampton was completed and sold to the homeowner. It was a great pilot for us because it allowed us to demonstrate many of the areas of innovation that we have been focusing on. The Big Enough project focused on four areas of inquiry. How can we build just big enough? Ownership and financing, the design and construction, including energy efficiency, and social and cultural expectations. Those four areas give the foundational framework to explore this sort of intersectional issue of how we get home ownership to as many people as possible. There isn't a single solution that's going to allow someone earning minimum wage to become a homeowner. It's going to take a variety of strategies in order to achieve that goal. Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity's Big Enough project has really been a community effort. We've been working on pilot projects, homes that people can live in today, but we're also trying to gather input from others so that we can share resources, share opportunities, and share knowledge. This is a crew that meets regularly during the week. We're from Amherst and from South Hadley and from Northampton, so they come from a variety of places. The uh, Smith folk uh, electrical folks are here today doing the finished electrical work inside. Working with Habitat has been great because uh, these past three classes have been able to have the experience of, you know, wiring a house before they get on the job. And we do all the components of a house in the shop. I'm working on a disconnect right now, which is pretty much a switch. To be able to have a small home revolution, change needs to come not just from us, but from others in the community. And we're really excited about the efforts of our small home heroes, as well as the community partners that we have worked with in order to get the idea of a small, just big enough home into the world. The donation of land was the first time I ever donated goods as opposed to service or money. I could see this as being a concrete example of something that you could take and make something of in a very short time frame. From the time that the land was donated to the time when there was a home design and wall raising was remarkably short. It's a way to build community. It's a way to feel that service and something larger than oneself. And it's made my life a lot richer to be able to do that. Supporting habitat is important because housing is one of the fundamental things that people need. We need housing and we need food and we need love, right? So housing is critically important. Habitat helps people find a place where they can be proud and where they can feel good about themselves. So that's why Ron and I give. Affordable home ownership is something that Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity holds dear to its heart. It's the basis of what we've been doing for the last 30 years. We were able to make the house affordable for the future homeowner through a combination of reducing the sales price and then doing innovative financing. The homeowner got a first mortgage from a local bank and a second mortgage from Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity to bring that monthly payment down to something he could afford. We looked at the design and construction of the overall building. We really struggled to figure out a way to get our costs as low as possible. Habitat already focuses on energy efficient design and low cost building techniques. We tried to take it one step further and get the construction costs as close to $50,000 as possible. We were able to get to just over $50,000 for the construction costs because we had some generous in-kind donors. The solar panels on the house were donated, the land in which we built the house was donated, and those in-kind donations as well as not including the construction site work in the cost is what gets us to that $50,000 number. So we know it takes a village, not just a single construction company, to be able to get a house to be $50,000. So we have to balance both community support with on-site construction techniques in order to try and get to that goal of getting an affordable sales price. Actually, our entire office is down here helping today um, just because we wanted to really support Habitat. Kind of the goal of this project today is to bring everybody here to this site and get our hands dirty, 
um, be a little bit more humbled as architects by looking at the things that we do up close and personal um, and with a little sweat and sawdust. I mean, Habitat's a very unusual model in that the owners participate, a lot of people participate and learn the trades by being on the job site. So they also keep the cost of the project very low by having you know the labor be free, essentially, and everybody's volunteering. So that means that the cost of the project are really associated with the cost of materials, primarily. Um, and that's what makes uh, it possible for them to do this. I like it, I really do. I really like the way the design came out. It's a good experience to live in a small house. I have enough space for myself, so I don't feel, you know, enclosed. It's not too big, not too small, easy to maintain. One of our Just Big Enough Small Home Hero Award winners did her construction with volunteer labor from her family. So that's another way that you can do self-labor as a way to reduce construction costs. In fact, all of the materials that were used to frame out the few partitions that are here were salvaged materials from other building sites. Where literally my son, who's a carpenter, was raiding their dumpsters. All the framing that went into the attic area, the bathroom area, the shed out back, which cost me $33 to build, it was all salvaged materials. Part of my goal was not only in building small, was to try to eliminate waste. And because I could order the shell from Unity and they didn't waste materials, so, you know, I really wanted something to be as energy efficient as possible. And just efficiency of space, using every inch, not feeling cramped, not feeling like I need more space or more rooms. I think a lot about space is your perception. Granted, you have to be careful about how you use your, uh, the square footage of your house. The house was about seven panels plus the roof, which was three panels. And they set it down in place and it went up in one day. It was quite remarkable to watch the team ratchet all that together. The fact that it came out, it was up in a day, the front door lock went on that same day and I walked away and I had, I had an enclosed structure. Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity was able to get donated land to be able to build our small affordable house. But another strategy that other community partners could use would be working with a community land trust or a land bank in order to access affordable land. There's also many people who have family land but are cash poor or have other resources to access land as a way to make that housing more affordable in the long run. Some strategies that people have looked at are things like mobile home parks as a way to have rented land. If it's in a co-op or other long-term ownership, then that can be a way to create access to land. If you have zoning where you have to have at least an acre or two acres, that can obviously make it harder to both find land and afford, afford it. So if zoning is set up to allow for smaller lot sizes, that just in and of itself can provide more opportunities for constructing a smaller house. Smaller lot zoning, especially in the places that can accommodate it, that increases access and makes it at least possible. So it's just like a first step at fixing <laughs> the underlying land use regulations to make it possible. I had a lot of people come by and, you know, they were asking me, is this the house that was being built that year? And I said, yeah. So I, I think it fits nicely around here. It's a really good view. I, I really enjoyed looking out into the woods and you know, the trees and seeing the wildlife. One Garfield Avenue in Northampton. It was built on a small footprint. It was only 650 square feet, but it was also a small lot, about an eighth of an acre. And that was made possible by the zoning and regulatory support from the city of Northampton. One Garfield really provided an opportunity for us to be able to showcase not only the zoning that we've innovated, but also the fact that you know, modern building techniques and energy systems can really help someone create a really livable, efficient home at an affordable price. And that really is our goal in this project. Zoning is designed to create this comprehensive set of rules for where housing can be and what the housing can be. And a lot of zoning was written in the 1970s during a period of suburbanization. And so it doesn't necessarily meet 
the sort of goals and objectives that we have today. Uh, Northampton's done a lot of work about changing zoning to allow smaller homes, to encourage smaller homes. You know, when you own a home, you really do have to budget your money because bills, you know, like they vary. Other than that, I haven't really had any issues. I just got my first electric bill check and throughout the summer it was zero, which is really good. Yeah, the solar panels really do help save a lot of energy and money. So, uh, look at your budget, look at something called your debt to income ratio, which I'm going to explain tonight. It's basically how much money you bring in each month before taxes and how, what percentage of that um, you could use for a house. Home buyer education is an important part of making someone ready to be a home buyer. You know, whether they're getting it in a classroom setting or through one-on-one -on -one budget counseling, that can make a difference in their feeling like they know what the next steps are. Because if you become a homeowner and you get in over your head, you haven't done yourself any favors. So that's one of our concerns occasionally with fixer-uppers that have a lower sales price but maybe the person doesn't realize how much they're gonna to have to spend in the upcoming years and haven't budgeted for that. Or maybe they do, and there's certain people who can make that work. But that's why we're looking for different options that work for different people. There are so many people that we talk to. You know, part of the initiative we've been doing in, in the Valley and in Holyoke and in some of our other areas is trying to educate people who have never had a family member own a home on why they should own a home. It's really nice to educate and coach people into getting that next step of owning a home and just to understand what pride there is behind that. And education about that budgeting is huge. It's nice to be able to partner with Habitat, which has to do with affordable housing, which is so hard to find in Hampshire County and such an important piece of what it's gonna take for this community to continue to grow. The innovative strategy that Habitat is pursuing is a combination of a first mortgage from a bank and a second mortgage through Habitat to bring down the monthly payments. That second mortgage is something that we're doing through charitable contributions, but it's also something that other community institutions could work on. And if they were made more significant, it could make an impact in the affordability of home ownership for many people. We've talked with different agencies that work on those sorts of issues and hope to see some more change and opportunities offered for second mortgages to bring down that monthly payment cost. We've referred a lot of folks over the years to the Habitat properties. You know, it's a um, very affordable option. And, you know, I work with many people who can only afford 150000 Unfortunately, the Hampshire County market doesn't really offer much in that price range. So it's a terrific opportunity for people to be able to apply and secure one of the Habitat homes. You know, in working with folks, we were really encouraging them to begin saving and planning for home ownership. The loan types that Habitat is using don't require significant down payment, but folks need to still be in those habits of saving money because things are gonna break in the house. You know, hot water tanks, they're only good for 10 to 12 years and they're going to break. And when that emergency comes up, you wanna be prepared to be able to handle the emergency. In our, some of our communities, we really need to do home repairs and existing houses are affordable with the right subsidies for those repairs or first time home buyer mortgages. But in other communities, even the fixer uppers are too expensive or certain buyers aren't able to also withstand the impact to their budget of fixing a house as well as paying a new mortgage, property taxes and insurance. Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity has just finished our pilot at 1 Garfield Avenue and we're nearing completion this fall of 2019 on two modular homes on Glendale Road in Northampton. These other pilot homes are an important part of the overall Just Big Enough project because they allowed us to test modular zero net energy construction while still working with volunteers to finish some of the siding, finish work on the inside and give it that personal touch. We found with modular construction that it wasn't as cost effective as we had hoped, but that was primarily in comparison to a habitat construction build that engages a lot of volunteers. So modular construction can be more affordable when someone is comparing it to paying the wages of a carpenter versus having volunteer carpenters on site. 
These particular homes here, the reason why they've been put up so quickly is because they are modular homes that were made up in Vermont uh, by a company called Vermont, and that expedites the, uh, the construction quite a bit. These two are finished and we have two more that are going to be going in through the woods a little bit. We go from one project to another. It's a lot of fun and it's always an education. Everyone should at least volunteer for Habitat. Uh, it's a good life experience for anyone that wants to um, get into the volunteering community and learn more skills. I had carpentry experience back in high school, so I knew some of the things that we were doing. It's good to learn more of that stuff because down the road you might want to build your own house one day. I want to encourage do-it-yourselfers. Even if you don't have a lot of experience, there are great resources out there. You can do a lot yourself if you have the fortitude. It's challenging, but so it's, it's very rewarding. I hope to be able to encourage other retirees, and particularly women, and encourage people to look outside the box even in terms of financing to be able to do something like this. And this project expresses a tremendous amount about us as a community and our commitment to trying to figure out a way forward that makes sense. So it's not just a small house amongst many houses that Habitat's built. It's an experiment in trying to figure out how to build affordably. Um, it's an experiment in compromise between people coming from different walks of life to try and figure out how to do something together. Um, one of the things that drove us is trying to come up with a plan that was simple enough that other people could build it easily without having to go through complicated processes because the process of building is getting harder and harder for people. This project also suggests like let's embrace those challenges and find a way forward to insulate our homes in a way that allows them to be net zero and therefore shows that we can build homes with dignity for all of us um, and we can build communities that support us all. So this has been a really important project for us as a firm and it's been a real pleasure, Dennis, to work on it and to see Thank this you. project finally come to fruition and, and wish you all the best. Thank you very much. And that brings this ceremony to a close and I thank you all for coming and congratulations, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you.